Good morning. It is Sunday, June 7th. It is Trinity Sunday in the life of our church, and our scripture and thoughts will be centered around the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's begin, however, with a psalm, Psalm 11, which speaks to us about the presence of God in our lives, particularly when there are times of difficulty. And as we live through the time now of the coronavirus and now the time of the, um, of the protest and now the riots and the burning of cities in America, we want to turn our hearts and our minds to the Lord in worship. And we want to receive a word of comfort from the Lord. And this is what Psalm 11 says, a Psalm of David. In the Lord, I take refuge. How then can you say to me, flee like a bird to your mountain? In other words, he is not going to panic. David will not panic because he's taking refuge in the Lord. For look, the wicked bend their bows and they set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. In other words, they're bad people in the world and they're about doing their business, which is not good. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? What do we do when we see the foundations of society being ripped at and torn apart? This is his answer, verse four. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. He observes everyone on earth and his eyes examine them. The Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked, those who love violence, he hates with a passion. On the wicked, he will rain fiery coals and burning sulfur. A scorching wind will be their lot. For the Lord is righteous and he loves justice and the upright will see his face. Friends, we have a God in heaven who lives in heaven and he rules over the world. And despite the circumstances and difficulties in our world, in our, in our current circumstance, whatever those might be, God rules in heaven. We have come from God and he has created us and made us. And if we believe in Jesus Christ, we shall return to the Lord and be with the Lord in heaven. Jesus will come to take us to be with him. We can be certain that the Lord is on his throne in heaven. And so today we come to worship God. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let us give our hearts and our minds to him. Let us trust in his word. Come, let us worship the Lord. Amen. Friends, our first scripture reading today comes from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 4 and 26 to 31. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty and darkness was over the surface of the deep. The spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from darkness. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image and our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky and over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move on the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. And they will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made and it was very good and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture lesson comes from 2 Corinthians, the very last verses of 2 Corinthians. You will hear the Trinitarian benediction in 2 Corinthians 13, verses 11 to 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another, be of one mind, live in peace. The God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our third and final scripture reading comes from the last verses of Matthew. It's Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. We know this passage as the Great Commission. It's Jesus commissioning his disciples for their mission. 
Hear the word of the Lord. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all believers and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray that you'd speak to us this morning and through your word that you'd strengthen us, help us to trust in you and receive the blessings you have for us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. What you believe about God makes a huge difference in your life. You can live your life with power, or with worry. You can live your life with confidence or with uncertainty. And what you believe about God makes a huge difference in this. Is it possible to know God and to know who God is? According to scriptures, it is. And as a Christian, I say, yes, of course we can know God. And we have reliable witnesses. We have the witness of scripture. We have the witness of people with changed lives. We have the witness of the church. We have the witness of Christ. And what we believe about God is vitally important to the way we live and, of course, to the way that we die. Now, today is Trinity Sunday. And for Trinity Sunday, we affirm that there is one God who is known in three persons. God is known to us as Father. And we learn clearly, both through his revelation, through the prayers of Jesus, uh, through the teachings of Jesus, that God, the Creator, is the Father. God is revealed as the Son, Jesus of Nazareth, who said he and the Father are one. God is revealed as the Holy Spirit, who, when Jesus ascended to heaven, was sent to us to lead, to guide, and support us. While our understanding of God might not be full and complete, we come closest to understanding the true God of the universe by understanding the God of Trinity. Karen's been reading a book uh, this week. It's uh, called A Severe Mercy by a man named Sheldon Van Auken. And Sheldon Van Auken talked about growing up in Carmel, Indiana, outside of Indianapolis. And, and then uh, he was married and he and his wife had uh, a beautiful, loving relationship. And he writes about it in his book. And he also wrote letters to C.S. Lewis and at one point in the book, uh, Severe Mercy, Sheldon Van Auken talks about being around a friend and they would talk about 
God and they talk about trying to understand God. And he was talking with a friend that said, I, you know, I get a lot of the things about God. I get that God is love and I get a lot of these understandings of God, but I just don't understand the Trinity. And so Van Auken wrestled with that a little bit. How could he possibly explain the Trinity? Well, Van Auken was an author. Uh, and they were, they were in um, studying in, at a university in England. Uh, they were intellectuals. And so he tried this analogy. And I think it's a good one. He said, it goes, it goes something like this. Well, you have God the Father, and God the Father is like an author. That is, he, he, he writes a book. And the book is his word. It comes directly from the author. And the book, in that sense, is the same as the author. The, the book is the author's words. So the author would be like God the Father, the book or the word of God would be like Jesus, and then when you pick up the book and read it and when you internalize the words, you now somehow invisibly, the word uh, that is God has been transformed into your life and into your heart. Now the author of the book and the person himself, God, is now in your heart. It's invisible, but it's real. You're directed, comforted, and strengthened by these words. You're strengthened by the author. The word of the author is not only in print, but it is now inside of you. And this is like the Holy Spirit. So yes, the Trinity is a mystery, but there are ways that we can understand the Trinity. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. And there are images which help us to understand that, that one substance can be expressed in three different ways. So the substance of water, it can either be a solid in the form of ice or it can be a liquid in the form of, of uh, water or it can be a vapor or a steam. It's all H2O, but expressed in three different ways. Now listen to the words of the Westminster Confession of Faith. Uh, this might be a little bit hard to listen to. It's, it's always harder to, to hear something that, that might be better read, but the Westminster Confession of Faith speaks to Trinity. First, the Westminster Confession speaks to God, and then the first definition of God, chapter 2, it's of God and the Holy Trinity. There is but one, only one living and true God who is infinite in being and perfection and a most pure spirit, invisible, without body, parts, or passions, immutable, immense, eternal, incomprehensible, almighty, most wise, most holy, most free, most absolute, working all things according to the counsel of his own immutable and most righteous will for his own glory, most loving, gracious, merciful, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth, forgiving iniqu iniquity, forgiving iniquity, transgression and sin, rewarder of those who diligently seek him, and withal more just, and terrible in his judgments, hating all sin, and who uh, will by no means clear the guilty, and whose will by no means clears the guilty. Only one living and true God. One living and true God. Now, what are we, what are we up against in our world as we seek to believe these things? Well, we're, we're, we live in a generation they will say it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere in your belief. R.C. Sproul pointed that out, great Bible teacher. He said that this has been the norm in our culture now for years. It doesn't matter what you believe as long as you believe something. However, this cultural norm it is at odds with the Bible and with the beliefs of Christianity. The Bible says it. We can enter into the kingdom of God as Christians. It's clear in scriptures that what you believe matters. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, you enter the kingdom of God by faith and by belief. If you believe in the God of the Bible, then you believe in the Ten Commandments. You will live through, through following the Ten Commandments. You will live the happiest and most fulfilling life possible because this is what God teaches us to do. If you believe in Jesus and in how he taught and how he lived and how he prayed and how he loved one another, you will live a happy and fulfilling life. In John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So entering the kingdom of God begins with belief. And as we believe the right things about God, then we begin to, to follow the best possible path for our life, the most fulfilling and fruitful path. Now, there are other ways 
And there are other religions. Some people in our world today just say, well, any religion will do. And any, any religion's right if you're religious and have religious sensibilities, it's all right. Because no one can judge. There's one religion that promotes the fact that there are 33 million gods. And this would include a god of the wind and a god of the waves and a god of the crops and a, a god of the earth and a god of the sky and a, a god of the... Uh, this animal or that, this plant or that. And in this particular religion, you can actually become one with God by perfecting your own life. And if you don't perfect your own life, you die and come back in another form. It's called reincarnation. And it's through reincarnation that you overcome the world. Now, one religion has to be right. Either there is, there is one time to live and we face one judgment and there is one life, or there are many lives. Either there is one God or there are 33 million gods or however many number you come up with. So if you believe that there is one true God, you start to separate yourself out from the crowd. That God would not be you and that God uh, would be the true God of heaven. And if there is the true God of heaven and he's revealed himself to us, then that true God of heaven gives us the right rules for living and we can know God and we can follow those rules. Probably the most popular religion today is to have no religion at all and to make up the rules as you go along. The mayor of one of the most uh, important cities in the world, as his city was riding this last week, said that he liked... John Lennon's song, Imagine. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us, only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. Imagine there are no countries. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for. No religion to imagine all the people living in peace. You may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and all the world will be as one. So there's the imagination that if you simply get rid of any religious belief, then you will be uh, rewarded uh, with a positive imagination and everyone will be happy and there'll be uh, no love of country or property and there'll be no differences between people. That's the vision. So either there is a God and the God, there is one true God, one true and living God for the universe, or there are multiple gods, or there is no God. But the fact is we live very differently according to what we believe. Not only does it matter what you believe and how you live here and now, but it matters what you believe eternally. The Bible says it matters to God what you believe. As a matter of fact, God desires that we acknowledge him and God desires that we worship him. God despises religion that is a religion of human invention. And so we believe God in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One God, one true and living God of the universe. So Jesus uh, was with the disciples and they went to Galilee. They were up on a mount and they worshiped him. And Jesus said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Here he reveals the Trinitarian nature of God and teach them to obey everything I've commanded you and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Here we see these two principles. The one true God, there is one God, and the one way to follow him, to obey his commandments. And this, according to our Christian faith, is the truth about God that we find in the Trinity. Now, the Bible in no way presents itself as mythology. No way. Uh, from the very beginning, from the, from the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the scripture says that there is one God. There is one God in creation, and that God created. There is one God who formed uh, man out of the dust and breathed the breath of life into mankind. So monotheism comes first through the Old Covenant in Judaism, and then continues through the New Covenant. In the great Hebrew passage in Deuteronomy 6, the Shema 
It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. Now, this is the first place in history where there is a proposal that there is one God, not a, not a God of the sands and a God of the bricks and a God of the mortar and a, and a God of the skies and a God of the clouds, but one God. By the way, if there are multiple gods, who do you go to and who helps and how do they help and how do you know that God? So in the scripture, there's an affirmation of one God, a true God who knows us and who loves us and whom we also can know and love and serve. It says in Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The problem with multiple gods or no gods or gods that we make up for various occurrences is that for every eventuality and every situation, this, this type of polytheism ends up expressing itself through some sort of mythology. You can think of the great Greek myths in these stories. The people didn't really believe these things happened. Did they really believe there were gods living on Mount Olympus? And did they really believe that gods would come down from heaven and take women and have half God uh, and half uh, men? And do they really believe the stories of the great achievements and the great failures? And do they really believe that there are multiple gods and they have moral struggling just like human beings do? The truth is the scripture tells us that our God of heaven is perfectly holy. He judges perfectly. He is immutable. That is, he is unchangeable in his thoughts and his decisions. And isn't it as if God creates a commandment and then says, oh, a thousand years later, oh, gosh, we need to change that. I was wrong when I did that. God is constantly trustworthy. Christianity doesn't produce a mythical character, but rather one true and living God known as the Trinity. The Father who lays the plans, the Son who executes the plan, the Spirit who brings the plan alive in our hearts. In Hebrews chapter 9, it says, Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands that was only a copy of the true one, he entered heaven itself, now to appear for us in God's presence. In other words, the scripture says, Jesus is, has gone into heaven to appear for us like an advocate, like a lawyer appearing before the judge for us. Nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again, the way the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood that is not his own. Otherwise, Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But he has appeared once and for all at the culmination of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of his, himself. Just as people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many and he will appear a second time. Not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those that are waiting on him. So, Christ has entered heaven. Christ, in his entry into heaven, went before the Father for you and me. We are destined to live once and after that to face judgment, but we can face judgment if we face judgment because of the work that Christ has done for us. Some religions teach that there are many lives and many opportunities to get it right, but the Bible teaches we have only one life, and after that we face judgment. The Bible teaches that Jesus entered a sanctuary to sacrifice his life for your sins and for mine. And if we accept the sacrifice by admitting our sin and casting ourselves on his mercy, then we have life and life to the fullest. The Bible says that Jesus is also coming back again. So we know God the Father, the one God, the creator of the earth and all that is in the universe. The Father who planned the intricacies of the, the cell structure, the God that planned the universe and the solar systems and the suns and the galaxies. The Father, the creator of the earth and all that is in the universe, the Father who has a plan for all mankind. The Father who has a plan of salvation because of our sin and our failings. The Father who wants us to enjoy eternity with him is prepared a place for us in eternity. We have one true God who makes us accountable to him he is holy and perfect. Listen again to the, to the words that describe God. There is but one 
only living and true God who is infinite in being and perfection and most pure spirit, invisible, without body, parts, or passion, immutable, immense, eternal, incomprehensible, almighty, most wise, and most holy. And we repent of our sin because we realize we are not holy. We do not, we change our mind. We change what we say. But there's one God, most holy. We know God is the Son. The Son came not to, to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Son was fulfilled in his stewardship of his life and freely gave it for us. And the Son suffered and died that we might have fellowship with the Father. And the Son rose again from the dead to show us that there is eternal life. The first of those that are resurrected and all who believe will also have that resurrected life. God so loved the world that he sent his only Son. And we know that God is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads and guides. The Holy Spirit uh, comforts us. The Holy Spirit gives us assurance of eternal life. The, the Holy Spirit fills us with the power of God. The Holy Spirit leads us to do good and right things. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So let us trust in the Father who made us. Let us trust in the one true and living God. Let us trust in the Father who made us and called us. Let us trust in Jesus Christ who gave his life for us and graciously gives us all things. Let us trust in the Holy Spirit who brings us alive in God's will and for God's purpose, who inspires us. Let us believe and receive God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Let's pray. So God, we seek to set a foundation below our feet and the foundation is that you love us and that you exist us exist and there's one true god and we receive you and we depend upon you in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen Friends, receive the benediction today. The Lord is with you. Father, creator, lover of your soul, Son, Savior, and Lord, Holy Spirit, counselor, comforter, and guide. Go in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father and in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.